Based on the request from one of our viewers, we have created this tutorial where we'll discuss how to create a belt-in pulley system like this, using some simple techniques in Blender. So let's say we have already created a set of four pulleys in a composition, and this will be our starting point. Now we want to run a rope or a belt through these pulley system. So let's go to the front view mode. We will do the entire construction in this mode, and please note carefully that this is our x-axis, and this is the z-axis. Since we want to add a rope or a belt in this way, we need to first create a bezier curve that has a shape similar to this. So let's go to the add menu and add a bezier curve. By default, the curve gets created on the xy plane, but we want it to lie on the xz plane. So we have to change its x rotation angle to 90 so that the curve gets easily visible when we are in the front view mode. But we need to edit this curve in order to give it a shape like this. So we need to switch over to the edit mode. We can use simple tools for curve editing, like grab and move, or extrusion, and use the curve handles to change its shape as needed for our design. If you are not very familiar with this, you can check our basic tutorial on curve editing, the link is given below. Let's also turn on the x-ray mode from here, so that we can see the parts that are hidden behind the pulley. And we can do one more thing, let's change the curve's handle types to free, so that we can move each individual part of a handle, without affecting the other part. You should try to make this curve as smooth as possible, so invest some time here. And please note that this curve should pass through the center of the belt or the rope, and it should make a tangent at the points where it enters or leaves a wheel. The rest of the parts should be either straight, or it should take a round form as per the wheels. So in this way, we need to complete this entire construction, it will take some time to create the curve that perfectly follows this shape. Once we are completely done with this construction, we can switch off the x-ray mode and go back to the object mode. We need to then add a rope that will follow this curve. So let's go to the add menu and add a cylinder to our composition. It should have a small thickness, so let's reduce these two scale factors. Then we need to rotate it by 90 degrees in order to make it perfectly horizontal. And we need to give it enough length so that it can cover this entire curve. So let's change the z-scale factor to maybe 20. In the next step, we need to subdivide this belt sufficiently, otherwise it won't bend smoothly along this curve. So we have to again go to the edit mode, and the best way to subdivide this cylinder is through the loop cut tool which is here. By default, it will create only one subdivision, but we can change the number of subdivisions from here, maybe 256. We need to ensure a dense pattern for these subdivisions, so we can even go for a higher value like 512. This number actually depends on the length of our rope. Now, we need to deform the rope according to this curve. So let's go to the modifiers tab, and we need to add a curve modifier, which is right here. Then in this curve field, we need to select the curve object, which we created along our desired path. Now, if we move the rope along the x-axis, by changing its x-location value, we'll see that the rope or the belt is moving along the curve path. So this way, we can create a belt-in pulley system, but before that, let's fix its x-location value to say 26. This initial value of 26 is going to play an important role, the amount of change in the x-location value of our rope, from this central value, will determine the angle of rotation and the direction for each of these pulleys. Let's first select any one pulley. We need to initiate a change in its y-rotation angle like this, based on the change of location of the rope, and this can be done easily with a driver. So right-click on this, and select, Add Driver. Then in this variable object, we need to select our rope, which is basically this cylinder. And then, in this expression field, we need to get the deviation from the central value. So it will be within bracket, 26 minus the variable field, or the x location value, which we need to then divide by, 1.1. This 1.1 is known to us beforehand as the radius of this pulley. Once this driver is added to the first pulley, it will rotate automatically if we move the rope or change its x location value like this. Now, we need to copy this driver and apply the same to all other pulleys. So select this pulley and right-click here and copy the driver. Then for the second pulley, we'll right-click here and select the paste option. But the direction of the rotation will be opposite for these two pulleys. So we have to first paste the same driver here. Then we'll go into the edit driver mode. For the reverse direction, we'll just add a minus sign before this expression. Then we need to copy this new driver, and we'll paste it like before for our final pulley. 
Now the pulleys are internally connected to the rope, through their drivers, so they will all rotate synchronously as we try to move the rope toward left or right. Then in the next step, we'll add some objects, or payloads at these two ends of the rope. So we can use two cubes that we have added beforehand, and we want this entire system to be driven by one of the cubes. For example, if we move this first cube, we want the rope to move along this curve, which should cause the pulleys to also rotate as per their drivers. The current x location of this cube is minus 6, so the amount of change in this value should drive the movements of the other parts of this system, so we need to add a driver to this cylinder object. Its current x location is 26, so when we add a driver to this object, we have to add this 26, just after the variable part, and for this variable, here we have to select our first cube, which is named as cube 1. And the variable type should be the x location. So this expression should be variable minus, minus 6, which will become a plus 6. So that completes our driver, let's now do a quick test by moving this first cube along the x-axis, and we see that the pulleys are rotating as expected. Now we'll add a similar driver for this cube, but an increase in the x location here, should translate into a decrease in the z location for this. So select this cube, and let's right click on its z location, and select the add driver option. Like before, we have to select cube 1 for its variable object, but this time, we need to reverse the change in this variable, so we'll keep this part within a bracket with a minus sign. The variable will be var plus 6 like before, and we are finally done with the drivers. So our final result will look like this. We can now add some materials, maybe a table and other things, and render the scene. We can even use gravity to drive these pulleys, but Blender's physics does not interact well with the cloth sim, so there are limitations in integrating them together. That's all for today, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more such tutorials.